Hello, my name is Sahil Malik. I'm a trainer and consultant and I love Angular. I deliver trainings on Angular regularly and you can find my email address right here. Here's another video making yet another Angular concept easy and simple to understand. As always, I look forward to your feedback. Thank you for watching. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build your very simple Angular application and I'll do so using System.js. Now, if you, uh, you know, if you're watching this video and will follow along, you need to be familiar with the basic idea of, you know, what is a module loader? Okay, I've talked about this in other videos on YouTube, so check them out. Uh, but that's one thing you need to know. The other thing you need to know about is, you know, node-based development, NPM, etc. So again, I have videos on that on YouTube, check them out. And the third thing you need to know is some basic understanding of TypeScript. And you'll find lots of content on that on the web. I have a course on Udemy, so please check that out. Now, with that background, let's go ahead and write the world's simplest Angular app using System.js. So I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, a folder here called Angular System.js. Let's go in here. I'm gonna say npm uh, init dash dash yes, and it'll go ahead and create a package.json for me. I'm gonna go, go, go ahead and open this in VS Code, and I'm gonna go ahead and modify my package.json as follows. So let's go ahead and give it a better name because that name is obviously not that great. Version is fine, don't need a double description. This main file, we don't need it. The scripts we're going to modify in a second. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, author is a duplicate, keywords, I guess let's skip it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically modify this file to include things like dependencies, so let's put a comma here. So I'm gonna go ahead and include uh, dependencies. And what dependencies, we'll get to that in a second. And I'm gonna also include dev dependencies, right? Okay, so my project is well on its way. Now let's go ahead and turn this into an Angular project. So what do I need for this to be an Angular project? Well, I need to add a bunch of Angular related node modules. So let's go ahead and add them here like that. And that alone is not enough because you know, Angular targets uh, browsers that haven't even come out yet. So they're targeting newer standards, standards that aren't even implemented in browsers yet. So you may run into an older browser that doesn't implement a particular method. So we need polyfills, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few other node modules here. And these modules are a combination of polyfills and zone.js and system.js, right? So these are things that, uh, you know, Angular requires. Uh, zone.js, you know, heavy reliance on that. And system.js is the, you know, module loader that we have chosen for this example. Is the best module loader? I don't know. Uh, but uh, most of the times I prefer to use Webpack, but system.js has its advantages. So that's what I need. And I'm gonna need a few dev dependencies also. So specifically the dev dependencies I need are these. So I need better IntelliSense. I'm gonna go ahead and you know put these types in there. Uh, so you know my TypeScript compilation works, etc. And I need a web server and I need TypeScript and I need to do both of these together. So I'll use concurrently, right? So based on this, now I can go ahead and write some scripts into my project. And these scripts here look a little bit like that. So the idea behind these scripts is that uh, TypeScript is gonna basically look at all the TypeScript code and it will uh, you know, transpile it into JS. Watch will do so in watch mode, so it is continuously looking for the changes. And as you make a change, save, it'll turn it into JavaScript. Light server is a web server that's gonna run this project on port 3000, you can obviously configure it. And this command here is basically saying, hey, if TypeScript compilation passes, then run both TypeScript in watch mode and the web server together. So that sort of gives me like live reload, it gives me a good dev environment to work with. Now, obviously TypeScript on its own is not going to like work as is because it needs a file called tsconfig.json. 
So tsconfig.json is, is there to basically give hints to the TypeScript compiler. Like we want to say that we're targeting ES6 here, we want to use common JS, you know, module resolution, so SystemJS works nicely with CommonJS, so does Webpack, so CommonJS is the best choice today. We want to do source maps, we want to use the, you know, decorators uh, because Angular uses them heavily, and a few other things. Oh yeah, this is interesting that we're saying that for compilation, go ahead and look in node modules at types, because you notice here that I have a couple of, uh, you know, types, typings installed over there, and it, we're basically telling the TypeScript compiler that, you know, look in here for types. Uh, and obviously we don't want to compile node modules, so I've excluded that. So my package JSON is done, so I'm gonna go ahead and run npm install. While it is churning in the background, I can start working on my Angular application. Okay, so let's start with, uh, you know, my index.html file. So let's go ahead and create a new file here called index.html. And I'm gonna paste some code here and you see here that basically over here at the very top, I have polyfills. Um, is referencing them out of node modules the best choice? Absolutely not. I mean, it's okay for dev environment, but uh, you know, this will get us started, but in real world applications, you probably want to bundle it properly and ship it using, SystemJS can do it with JSPM, or you can use Webpack, and that's what I'll be using mostly. But uh, hey, this gets us started in understanding Angular without all the other stuff around it, so that's good. Now, SystemJS needs to be given some hints, as in when I want to load at Angular, where is this file, right? For instance, here we're saying, start this thing called app. Well, what is app, right? Is it gonna look for a file called app.js, or is it gonna look for a folder called app, and that is it going to look for a file called index.js or main.js? So basically all those hints go in this file, system.js.config.js. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know, create this file here, systemjs.config.js. And here there's a lot of junk here, but basically it's hints to systemjs. We're saying that if I ask for app, then look for a folder called app, and inside of that, look for a file called main.js. And the default extension that I care about is JavaScript. So we're loading JavaScript files. So again, you can make this fairly complicated if you want. Rest of the logic is to load stuff out of node modules. So as this file indicates, I need to create a folder called app, and that is where I can start writing Angular code finally, right? So the rest of everything I talked about so far was just plumbing. Now I can write Angular code. So now let's go into the app folder and start writing some Angular code. All right, how is this npm install going? It's done, good. Now. The first thing we need in any Angular app is the concept of bootstrapping the applications. And typically speaking, the best practice is create a file called main.ts and add your bootstrapping code in there. Now you notice that in this, I'm loading something called as an app module, which I haven't written yet, but I will in a second. That's why we're getting these red squigglies. And then we load the app module and then we bootstrap it. Now, this is how every Angular application is structured. It's a bunch of modules. You have a starter module, and the module imports other modules from Angular or maybe other places, and it exports other modules and maybe it depends on other modules. So a module is a good way for me to logically organize the app. There's a starter module, also known as a root module, which is the app module in this case. And then we're going to rely on some modules, we're going to contain some modules, we're going to import, export things out of our modules, and so on and so forth, right? So let's go ahead and see what that app module looks like. So it's loading it from a file called app.module.ts. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a file here called app.module.ts and go ahead and paste it here. Okay, so this is this at ng module being imported from Angular code as a decorator. So one of the things Angular likes to do is it works with TypeScript classes and you know, there is nothing in this class that differentiates it from a class or an Angular class. So we need things to sort of tell this class that, hey, this is actually an ng module. So that is the job of this decorator up here. So this ng module that you're looking at up here, imported from Angular core, uh, basically it is importing browser module, for, again, from Angular platform browser. So that gives us some basic data mining features, etc. 
it declares app component and it bootstraps app component. So bootstrap is your starter app and de declarations are all the things that this module needs to know uh, to be able to run. So for instance, it may rely on some services. It may rely on certain pipes or components, and etc., etc. You need to give that list over here, right? If you were using routing, that goes in here too. If you're depending on other modules, that goes in here too. If you're writing a module that is intended to be reusable, doesn't have a UI, maybe even has a UI, but it is supposed to be reusable, you want to export some facilities, maybe services, then you would have an element here called exports and then you would add the exports out of here. Okay, but let's stick with our simplistic Angular app. We are importing browser module. We've got just one component, which I haven't written yet. And then we are bootstrapping that component. So let's look at that component next. You see here that I'm loading this file called app.component. So the component is actually very, very simple. So let's go ahead and create this file. And this is what app.component.ts looks like. So again, a plain Angular application or a class or a TypeScript class. This class has got no angular -ness in it, pardon my English, but basically this class is just a TypeScript class. And obviously we need to sort of tell that, hey, you know what, this is actually an Angular component. So we put a decorator on top, just like we did for module. We import this decorator from Angular core. And then inside the decorator, we've got something called a selector. So selector is an interesting concept. So what happens is that this is the bootstrap module, okay? A bootstrap component. It's, it has a selector called my app. And basically what will happen is that it's going to look for an HTML tag called my app and the component is gonna get rendered in there, in that HTML tag over there. Simple as that. So this is my simple component. This is the user interface for the component, template. Of course, it's a string. I'm using this backtick to create a multi-line string. You can externalize these templates by you know, saying template URL, and then you can put it in its own file. Totally possible to do. Or actually, component has got a whole bunch of things in it. Uh, you know, you can uh, say create styles over here and these styles are unique to your component and there's a language for embedding these styles. You can say that this style is applicable to this component or its children, right? So you can uh, like slash deep and so on and so forth. There's a lot of concepts available there, but it gives you the ability to, you know, encapsulate your styles in just your component. So that way... Uh, you know, if you if you drop your component on a page, the external styles don't affect you as much, right? Or your component doesn't affect the rest of the page. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can add providers in here. So let's say my component depends on certain services. You can provide them here. A lot of things attached to components, right? And inside the component, I have a simple, uh, you know, a property here called name. It's a public property. And I'm using this double mustache, double mustache, mustache. Uh, syntax where I'm data binding this and then I have this object here again because I have TypeScript I have these nice concepts like interface and strongly typed hobby and I have basically uh, you know data bound that using this thing called ng4 that's called as a directive specifically that's called as a structural directive because it affects the structure of the page being rendered and basically we're saying let hobby of hobbies and it is rendering out in you know, a hobby by hobby by hobby, right? And that's basically it. This is my starter Angular application. I'm using some basic data binding over here. You know, one way data binding, another word for this is called interpolation, double mustache syntax, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But it's basically one way data binding. And now that my project is done, I did an npm install in my package.json. I had a command error called start. I should be able to hit npm start now. And then what that'll do is that it will TypeScript compile my project. And if that succeeds, no errors, then it'll run the TypeScript compiler in watch mode and it'll run everything in the web server so I can you know, view the results of my hard work in a browser. So let's go ahead and try that. npm start. And it is compiling to TypeScript now and looks like it worked. It might ask you this for the very first time, just hit allow. And my first Angular app is working and that's pretty darn neat. 
and I can go to my Visual Studio Code project here and I can, let's say, you know these JS files, etc. that you're seeing, you're probably gonna hide them. I have another video on YouTube where under VS Code tips and tricks, hiding unwanted files. So you can check out that video and you know, basically I talk about how you can make your dev environment a little bit cleaner, slightly off topic. But let's come back here. In app component.ts, let's go ahead and add a new hobby. And I'm gonna say, I have another hobby which is ID4 and let's call it uh, YouTube save and it recompiles and this shows up here as well. Now you see this three four thing going on here. That's just because that's how I've written it. I is the index, zero based index. Hobby ID is this guy here and hobby name is that guy there, right? Simple as that. The cool thing is that debugging also works. So I hit F12, go to sources, app, and I'm gonna go to app, see both the JavaScript and TypeScript files show up here. It was running as JavaScript, but because we have source maps, the TS file also shows up here. So I'm gonna go to app component.ts, and let's go ahead and set a break, oops, not there. I'm gonna set a breakpoint on line 23, and I'm gonna hit refresh, and you know, I'm debugging TypeScript now. That's pretty neat. How about that, right? And this is how you can write the world's simplest Angular app using System.js. Now, is this production ready code? No, absolutely not. Because again, you don't wanna ship this node modules junk to your customers. You don't wanna ship .ts, you don't wanna ship .js, .map. So there's obviously a lot more that we need to learn uh, around you know, bundling, packaging, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you introduce multiple environments in it, languages, uh, you know, what if you have other artifacts, CSS, what if you had SAS in here. So obviously this project template can get a lot more complicated, but this is enough to get us started with writing simple Angular applications. Next I'm gonna show this same example using Webpack, but we'll do that in another video. Thank you very much for watching.